Good evening, St. Lucia, and welcome to another edition of SLP Town Hall Tuesday. I'm your host, Mondi Lewis, and my guest this evening is none other than Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, the endorsed candidate for Shozel Saltibus. Good evening, Dr. Prosper, and welcome to SLP Town Hall Tuesday. Good evening, Mondi. I'm very delighted to be here tonight, and I would like to say hello to all my people of Shozel Saltibus who are listening tonight. Ah, very well. Uh, and we are welcome again. I know it's not your first time, but um, it is the first time that you have, I think, um, you're the only guest. So we're going to have some good informative discussion today um, because we know um, that the election date is near. It's the 1st of June, so we have five more days till the fifth anniversary. Um, I mean, it has been five years of nightmare. So, I know you have a lot to say. Dr. Prosper, we're not hearing you, so could you unmute a bit? Yes, I'm saying that today is also the beginning of the hurricane season, mm -hmm. and I'm hopeful that things are not as violent as a hurricane. Oh, well... Uh, interestingly enough, on my drive here, I was listening to, I'm not even sure which station, and um, the host was talking about all these talks of violence from the other side. And, you know, he said, it's only when somebody thinks that way, they're the ones who want to perpetuate that kind of behavior, but they're calling your name first because they know what has planned. And I thought that very interesting. So even now, if you're talking about... Um, you know, of uh, violence. But like I said to people, we've had Hurricane Allen for five years, and I think we've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but let's get right into it. Um, Dr. Antoine, you're no stranger to Shuzel Saltibus. So could you briefly just tell us about um, growing up um, and being from the community? Um, well, before I, I speak to you about uh, my community, I want to say hello to my campus team. I want to say hello to my people of Chosel Saltibus, Atta from Lafarge, Caban from Rivadori, Aisha from Mogouj, Uviska from Cafe, Miss Rene from Londonderry, Miss Arrhenius from Daba, the Forward from Monsignor, Kadian from Roblo, Valerie, Sophia, Mr. Wise. These are my pillars on the ground, and I'm very grateful that they work with me so closely. I would also like to extend condolences to the, the family of Mr. Antoine Attil of uh, CU, Mr. Cuthbert Matter of Balka, and Mr. Aubrey William of, of, of Tetmon, also Mr. Avita St. Bryce of Industry. We have lost these wow. stalwarts, and I extend condolences to their families. Um, Pauline Prosper, <laughs> endorsed candidate for Shrozel Salty Bus. You want me to tell you about Pauline Monday or about Salty Bus? <laughs> well, your life in Salty Bus and Shrozel. Okay, I was, I was raised in Shrozel Salty Bus walk to school from Daba to Saltibus every day. Well, this is why I'm so I'm still so very young. <laughs> I <laughs> I was involved in almost everything in Saltibus. In the youth group, in the church choir, I became a member of the credit union at a very young age. I was involved in the leadership of the credit union as secretary treasurer on all the committees as the president. I was involved with the youth, the youth and sports council, the girl guides. So I, I worked, I had I've been a volunteer in my community for a very, very long time. And I was forced to take on leadership roles very early in my life and becoming a teacher in at the Saltibus Combined School made life much easier for me because I was able to interact more with the parents, with the students, with the young people of the community. I was lucky to have been raised with my 
family, in an extended family, um, being, as the Prime Minister would say, the product of a single parent. I, I must reiterate that, that I have criminal. become a good citizen. <laughs> I'm no criminal. I'm a responsible citizen who has made my contribution um, to my community. And I'm very proud of that. And I'm sure that there are so many people who are, who are proud of my accomplishment. Um, well, I, 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 must, I must say as well that um, living within a small community has really made me who I am today because the people around you, the love that you received around you really made a difference in who you become. The values that you have in society as well makes you, makes you who you are today. And so I'm very proud that I came from the community of, of Salty Bus, Chazelle, and I am here to serve my people in a different capacity. Thank you, Dr. Antoine. And coming from, because you retired, or did you retire or did you resign? I retired. Okay, so you retired. So you, you retired mm -hmm. as a district education officer? Yes, I did. Okay, and uh, what prompted you? Because, you know, it's, you've worked for such a long time, you've worked hard, you've made your mark. Why politics? Why would you want to put yourself and your family through this? <laughs> well, what it, honestly, is when you get there, you really know what it is. I have not regretted um, putting my, my life, my family through this. I, I should say that I was living a quiet life, going to work, meeting the teachers and the students, you know, working, um, looking at the issues, trying to solve problems on a daily basis. And I think politics is just the same, that you work with people and you try to solve problems um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think um, the education system has transformed me, the community has transformed me. And having been a volunteer all my life and working with people all my life, having understood the challenges that the people around me face. This has propelled me to become, you know, my background in volunteerism in Chozel, you know, the high levels of unemployment, especially in the, um, among the youth that I witnessed. My concern for the struggles of single parents and the elderly who made a contribution towards the development of Chozel Saltibus. I have witnessed the hopelessness on the faces of young people and the need to empower them and transform their lives, the lives of the people of Chozel Saltibus. Then uh, my experience working with people on the ground in different capacities in the education system was my motivation to serve my people at the policy decision level and to make a positive Okay, our internet is not cooperating this evening. Um, just bear with us, St. Lucia. Um, Dr. Prosper, she's still on the line, so we haven't lost her yet. Um, but again, you know, Dr. Prosper was telling us about her life. And because I've interviewed her once, I know of the stilling contribution that she has made to the people of Shwazel Saltibus. Um, and I think one thing she did forget to say was her contribution in church. And up to a few months ago um, was an animator. So I mean, I know she's very proud of that. Um, but you know, for me it is, I'm very proud to serve with Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, um, Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, and um, Sister Emma Hippolyt, who I have worked with in the past and formidable women and the women of Saint, of the St. Lucia Labour Party, um, none other, you know, just competence. Um, they believe in family, they believe in God. And um, the service to community, you can find that in all their resumes. Um, and I wonder sometimes where do they find the time? Where do they find the time to nurture um, their families, their communities? And, and how do they now even give of themselves to politics? 
and I see them daily um, just going about in the community. Um, and that for me is like, you know, there's still good people in the world. Um, but we will take a break and uh, perhaps we will have Dr. Antoine. If not, then you're stuck with me for the evening, St. Lucia. So we'll be right back with SLP Town Hall Tuesday. The St. Lucia Labour Party brings you testimonials of hope, testimonials of deliverance at a virtual public meeting on Sunday, 6 June 2021 at 7 p.m. on local television stations. After the five wasted years of this UWP regime, it is now time for the bountiful years of a Labour government. It is time for hope. It is time for deliverance. On Sunday, 6 June 2021 at 7 p.m. on local television stations, testimonials of hope. Testimonials of Deliverance from the St. Lucia Labour Party. The St. Lucia Labour Party, putting you first. Welcome back to SLP Town Hall Tuesday, St. Lucia. And I did manage to get Dr. Antoine back. So let's delve in back into our conversation. Dr. Antoine, welcome back. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> I, think were, I think right now we're seeing the real Shrizel beauty now. I, you're so, cl so much clearer. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks. Nice. Okay, so we had spoken about um, your involvement in the community and you touched on um, some of the issues that drove you to the politics, um, issues of unemployment, especially youth unemployment and what you saw going on in the community. So could you just expand on some of the major issues that you found as a candidate? I know as a citizen, we see things we have our own assumptions, but now that you've on the ground 24 seven meeting with people, what are some of the major issues that you found in Shrozel Saltibus? Well, one of the major issues in Saltibus is the acute water shortage in Shrozel Saltibus. Most of the communities um, suffer from that problem. You have a few places where the people tell you, we have a constant water supply. However, there are some areas where they get water once a week or twice a week, or sometimes, heaven knows, they have to collect water from somewhere else. So this is a, a problem that we have to, to deal with. Um, whereas there is a, a, a huge um, water reservoir at, um, at Delce, and water is constantly flowing down the road, some places in Delce still don't get water and more bush, you know. Um, Salty bus has a, has a, 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 an acute water problem as well. Um, there are issues with the intake of water, and there is need for better attention to, to, to the water supply in Salty bus, and also um, storage of water so that people and, and better management of the system so that people can get a constant water supply in, in the area of Shuzel Salty bus. Um, the young people are clamoring about the condition of the sporting facilities. I noticed of late that they have cut the grass on, on some of the, um, the fields, but uh, some of the, um, the young people, especially the young people of the say had to be paying $5 each just to cut the grass on the field. I know when the St. Lucia Labour Party was in power, all the fields were well kept, and this is not the situation now. Elections are near. So I, I realize a hasty cutting the grass on the field, but the, the young people have suffered for a long time. I had I had to intervene in the situation at cafe and, and remove the, the grass on the field so that the young people could could play. So um, they, they are also talking about upgrading the facilities, so somewhere to bathe when they are finished playing, you know, a toilet or something like that. The young people are, are looking at this. There's, um, there are issues with um, land ownership in Chazel. We have some people who have occupied lands for years, and to this day, they cannot get um, title to the land. And you know that if you don't have title, it is, it's difficult to get a loan so that you can complete your house. And some of the people are complaining. Um, land for ac access land for agricultural purposes. As I said on a previous program, some of the farmers are removed from their farms in short notice, and the land is used for housing. Actually, um, I, am, I am still wondering what, what the government is doing with the monies that are, are, 
that that they are they are that that they get from the the land that they sell in the they sell in the Chozel area is Chozel benefiting from the sale from the well, nine million dollars or whatever that they have made from the sale of land in the Chozel area? How is the Chozel community benefiting from 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 those from, from those funds raised from from the sale of lands? Um, we still have an issue of sand mining in Chozel, and I, I, as as we speak. Um, during this week, sand was still mined in the River Dory, on the River Dory beach. The beach is in a deplorable state. And I wonder whether the people who authorize this have a soul, or whether they care at all about, about the environment, whether they care about the shore of St. Lucia, whether it's desperation that is causing them to, 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 do, to, to, to go ahead and continue mining sand in Chozel and undermining the, the, the uh, sure. So I I don't know. It's 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 heart wrenching, and we should we should we should we should have a heart. We should have a soul. We should understand that it is a country. We should understand that when we leave, the generation to come has to survive. We 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 are aware of the damage that has been done, the deforestation that has happened in Saint Lucia. And you see the state of the rivers that we hardly have rivers to 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 talk about in Saint Lucia. If you compare with with Dominica, you realize that Saint Lucia has no rivers, and we have started on the shore. And although people have complained, it continues. The practice continues, and we wonder when will it stop? You know, when will people have a conscience to know that what they're doing? Is, is not is not the right thing. We have we have more we have a lot more problems in in Chozel. Um, unemployment among the youth. Um, mothers unable to feed their children, unable to send their children to school, unable to get a device for the children to access learning. We have the farmers who cannot sell their produce because the purchasing power of the public has been become so low. Um, we have the small businesses that were closed for a long time. Some of them have not recovered. Um, we have young people who have small businesses who cannot pay their rent, who cannot pay the utility bills that are being evicted. So it's if I have to sit and, and speak of the problems tonight in Chozel, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of problems, a lot of problems that the people of Chozel are facing. And we realize that those in authority, they are the ones who are getting wealthy mm -hmm. and the people are getting poorer. It is it is a sad it is a sad state of affairs. In in Chozel, um, we look at the, the Bellevue farmers um, um, that are, in fact, the farmers are shared between Chozel and, and Soufre. And the, the Bellevue farmers, are, so this, has, this has gone down. The, the, we need, we need um, to pump some, some money so that we revamp the, 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 the cooperative. And the minister has, has made it clear that he's not interested that a raster who is, uh, who is an SLP was in charge. And, and, and so he's not interested. But we have to think of the livelihood of the people. It would appear that we prefer um, CPJ to, uh, to import goods um, from, from overseas produce that, that the farmers, you know, products that the farmers can produce instead of helping the farmers so that we, we, they, they, have, they have a livelihood, so that the, the import bill in, in, uh, for, for St. Lucia is curtailed. It doesn't seem that, that we are interested in that. It seems all we are in, um, the, the, the government is interested in is to allow their friends and their family to continue to make their, 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 their money, to, to, to continue to become rich, and do not care about the livelihoods of the people of Chozel Salty, but the people of St. Lucia. Thank you, Dr. Antoine. 
Um, so you've identified a number of issues within your constituency. Um, but for you, what, what do you think are some of the issues that the interventions that you within an SLP government would like to do for the people of Shrizel Sotibus? Well, first of all, we need to manage the water resources of Shrizel. We, we must um, find, um, in fact, um, whatever water resources we, we have, first of all, we have to store it properly. So we need additional storage for water and, and, and management of, of the water. We, we need to make agriculture a priority in areas where agriculture is a livelihood for farmers. We need to make land available to farmers so that they can, they can farm. We cannot be removing farmers from lands and we do not find an ultimate, uh, 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 sorry, an alternative um, um, spot to, to put them in. Um, there is the Bangolo um, um, farmers facility that the, the minister has been talking about in every budget where they were targeting um, single mothers and youth that are marginalized. And I am wondering what has happened to that project. I am not hearing anything about it. Probably somebody can give me some answers. Because if you are targeting vulnerable youth and you're targeting single mothers, you are assisting them in making a livelihood. And you speak about a project all the time, and that project does not come to fruition. What, what, what are you targeting? Are you only targeting concrete and, 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 and cement? and not trying to touch the lives of the people of, of Shosea Saltibus. We, there, there is a, a problem with the, the, the landing site, for example, in Shosea. The, the fishermen have been complaining for a long time. We need to look at the problem seriously and, and, and get the technocrats to, to examine what the issue is and how well we can, um, we can we can solve that problem. I have seen a, a, a number of, of, of um, in fact, one, one gentleman from, from Shuzela Fisherman showed me um, a, a, a design that would probably solve that problem. And so we have, we have, we have to ex explore that. Um, the money that, in fact, the, the, the political leader has suggested that he will remove the facility fees that parents have to pay in schools and reinstate the laptop program so that students can get a device because we are not going backward. Education is, is, is moving forward and we have to move with the technology. So laptops and, and tablets will not be something of the past after COVID. It will um, continue to be very relevant. And so we have to move with the times. We have to move with technology and provide students with the devices so that they can use the available platforms for, for, for instruction. Um, we, use, we need to, um, to think of the youth seriously, the youth who are so frustrated in, in our communities, the youth who are, who are marginalized in, in our communities. Um, we need to, to, to get the youth employed. And as we have said before, we are looking at a youth economy where we are going to, to, to provide um, assistance to the, to the youth so that they just not technical assistance, seed money, so that they can start their own businesses we have we are going to provide for the youth um, one youth in every household a scholarship so that they can further their education they get, can get a university degree so that they can be empowered to help their families um, their siblings because when you get somebody who is educated in your family that person uh, um, this alone can raise the standard of living of, of the entire family we have to find ways of assisting single mothers. In, and, and I have proposed a, an agro-processing plan for Shuzel Saltibus so that we, we can um, 
integrate farming. Um, in fact, we can, we can um, the farmers can find somewhere to sell their goods. Dr. Prosper? And we can create them. Yes. <laughs> um, I just had to interrupt you just a bit um, because I know you will go on and on with your plans. And, and But when we come from the break, we will um, continue with it. But I have to take a break now. Um, St. Lucia will be back with SLP Town Hall Tuesday. The St. Lucia Labour Party brings you testimonials of hope testimonials of deliverance at a virtual public meeting on sunday 6 june 2021 at 7 p.m on local television stations after the five wasted years of this uwp regime it is now time for the bountiful years of a labor government it is time for hope it is time for deliverance on sunday 6 june 2021 at 7 p.m on local television stations testimonials of hope testimonials of deliverance from the St. Lucia Labour Party. The St. Lucia Labour Party, putting you first. Welcome back to SLP Town Hall Tuesday, St. Lucia. I'm your host, Mondi Lewis, and my guest, Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, the candidate for Shrewsel Saltibus. Um, Dr. Prosper was sharing with us her plans for her community, which she has labored in for very many years. Um, Dr. Prosper, I just wanted to know, even what have you been hearing in terms of education? I know you were a prince, former principal, a former teacher, um, and we're hearing a lot about not only the COVID issues, but um, we know a lot of parents are struggling. We know that um, the government promised a doubling of the school feeding program, and that did not happen. Um, what are the challenges are you hearing from the parents and the teachers of schools, especially in your community? Well, um, as for the, for, the, for the teachers, it has been very, very frustrating um, coping with the COVID um, protocols. Um, you have issues where students from the, from, from, from children sort of bus are contracting um, COVID and the teachers have concern about, concerns about their own safety at the school at the, at, at the moment. Um, you have issues where there's poor attendance at schools. A number of students are not reporting to school. In fact, I was at a school yesterday and when I thought there were only 20 students in the class, the teacher told me 25, five students were absent. And yesterday was Monday. Um, some of the issues have to do with um, students getting food um, to come to school, transportation, um, snacks, and the list goes on. Uh, we still have so many students who have no devices at the schools. And even when devices were given, some of the devices are defective and have to be returned to the ministry um, to be fixed, and sometimes they never return. Um, we have issues at the secondary school where the um, the form twos, form threes, form fours, with even the e-books. And a lot of those e-books are also defective and have to be returned. I think um, the teachers are finding now that the, the syllabus they have and the books that were put into the, the e-books, that there is not, um, there is not a, a match. And so teachers are asking now to get the children the textbooks come September as opposed to to the ebooks. So this is this is not working out. So when parents thought the children had ebooks and they didn't mm -hmm. have to buy textbooks, they have to return to textbooks in in, sep in September. And I heard it was also um, just leased to, to them. They have to unlike a laptop that they got and they're saying Lucia Labour Party and it belonged to them, you the ebooks are leased. To the children? They are, they, are prog they are programmed, yes. Um, well, well, no, I'm not sure. They are given to them to use from Form 3. But um, these um, programs were, were put into the, 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 the computers. Uh, but it is, it is not working. And a lot of the, the, the devices are, are defective as well. So I'm, I'm trying to, to figure out whether these devices were new devices or whether it's refurbished devices that were given to the children. 
because some of the children don't last two weeks with the device, you know, before, before mm -hmm. it, 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 it is defective. And I, and I know that I have given devices to children and to this day the devices are working. So we have to wonder what quality of materials that the students are, the students are given. And the parents, we still have an issue with transportation for the children to get to school. And even if they they are feeding programs in some of the schools, the children have to be fed breakfast. Um, right now, because of the time lost, some of the students have classes um, extended hours at school, and they have to get additional food to eat. And some of the parents still cannot afford and cannot afford the best the the the, the, the best fed. Um, we have households where students, the, the, the parents are farmers. And as I said before, the produce is not sold. They cannot sell because people don't have purchasing power. And, and so they, they do not have the, 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 the means to send, to send the children, to send the children to school. Wow. And those young people who cannot pay their rents and cannot pay their bills. So it's, it's poverty. You know, that, that, that is what the people are experiencing now. Yes, I see a lot of that happening um, all over St. Lucia in terms of people are really desperate um, and people need the assistance, but this government refuses to give a stimulus to the people of St. Lucia. I mean, it's quite unfortunate. Dr. Prosper, we have a question um, for you. Um, so let's take a listen. We've had a water issue in Dakite for quite some time now and uh, previous administrations have done nothing to eliminate this problem. What do you have in place to help curb this problem for us in the community? Yes, another question Thank about you your water. It. Yes, <laughs> as I was saying, but there is what Dakite is below um, Victoria and there's water at Victoria, but the water does not get, in fact, the water passes Victoria and goes down. So as, as I was saying before, it's a question of um, probably providing Dakita with its own tank so that the tank can fill up with water so that um, we, can, we can provide the Dakita people with water or to do proper valving so that um, everybody gets water, not just one set of people. Because we have a situation whereby um, when I was the principal of Delce, everybody knows how much water is just, you know, a hundred yards up the road. And we wouldn't get water at Delce. The water would just pass us straight and go down. And if people are using water at the bottom, it takes a lifetime to fill up and go uh, and, and come back up. Uh, it's only during the night that, that this would happen. So what I had to do as the school principal was to get water tanks for the school. So at least the tanks would fill up night time and the school would have water during the day. So this is probably a similar um, thing that can be done for the Dakita people so that they too can get a constant supply of water. Thank you for that, Dr. Prosper. Um, we have to take another and break, Saint Lucia. Yeah, before, before I continue, the other thing that can happen is just as the government can give tanks to their friends, they should probably embark on a program where people are provided with water tanks so that you can really alleviate that problem. And I would like to, 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 um, to compliment um, Atlas from the FAG and, and Mrs. Joycelyn Charles, um, who is the leader, who undertook a project to provide the people from Mottet area with, with water tanks. Well Last done. year, I, I want to, yes, well done, Mrs. Um, Atlas. Thank you, Dr. Prosper. Um, St. Lucia, we have to take another break, um, but this is SLP Town Hall Tuesday. My guest, Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, the candidate for Shrozel Saltibus. We'll be right back. The St. Lucia Labour Party brings you testimonials of hope, testimonials of deliverance at a virtual public meeting on Sunday, 6 June 2021 at 7 p.m. on local television stations. After the five wasted years of this UWP regime, it is now time for the bountiful years of a Labour government. It is time for hope. It is time for deliverance. On Sunday, 6 June 2021 at 7 p.m. on local television stations, testimonials of hope, testimonials of deliverance from the St. Lucia Labour Party. The St. Lucia Labour Party putting you first.
Welcome back to SOP Town Hall Tuesday, St. Lucia. Um, and as you saw, we have a very exciting virtual meeting on Sunday, June 6th, five years at max, five years since um, our nightmare began. Um, as we said in earlier, since Hurricane Allen has just been sitting on top of St. Lucia, um, but deliverance is near um, and the St. Lucia Labour Party is ready to serve the people of St. Lucia. And we have the likes of Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper. I'm very excited um, because the St. Lucia Labour Party offers a wealth of experience and youth. And, um, you know, and I think everyone is ready to serve and get St. Lucia back on her feet. Um, Dr. Prosper, we were talking about some of the plans um, and some of the areas in which you, can, you think you're able to remedy for the people of Shrizel Saltiba. So we spoke about the water problem, but we have another question for you. So here goes. When you win this year's coming election, I want to know what you have in place for the youth in this constituency, because I believe most politicians and reps, they have left the youth behind. So my question is, what are your plans for the youth of Shrizel? Yeah. Thank you for your question. The youth from, from, from Chozelle will not be treated differently from the youth of Castries or elsewhere. I will ensure that whatever resources are available, that Chozelle will get its fair share for the youth. The main problem that I have found among the youth of Chozelle is unemployment. The youth want something to do. We have youth from Chozelle who are very talented. They sing, they dance, they have plans to do their business. And the St. Lucia Labor Party has good news. We have, a, we propose a youth economy, a minister for the youth. And those energies that the youth have, those hobbies that the youth have, they can transform those hobbies into jobs, into businesses. They can start their own businesses because the St. Lucia Labor Party brings hope to the youth, is going to provide the youth with seed money to start their own business. There yeah, we we I I I have proposed as well the agro processing plant where we train the youth, where the youth can start their own the um the agricultural plots. And I'm not saying that all the youth will go down um, will start to, um with agriculture. We are going to train the youth um in different disciplines so that they have expertise. Some of them um can be consultants, some of them can be experts. Um, I am thinking that we need a very good restaurant in Chozelle and probably we can have a model restaurant because Chozelle people cook good food. And if we can get a model restaurant in Chozelle, so all the people in Gaspers who feel hungry can come down to Chozelle to eat and enjoy Chozelle cuisine. cuisine. Um, I intend um, um, helping the young people who are um, sports oriented as well to get scholarships to um to improve themselves um we have to to help the not just the youth who are um technically oriented or academically oriented we have to look at the the more vulnerable youth in the society and and help them um to acquire skills so that um for example basic plumbing skills basic electrical skills so that they can work in the community. They can, they can work as, if they can work as handyman or whatever it is, so that they too can, 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 can get a livelihood. We don't want a case where we have young, um, young boys, young girls who, are, who have um, left school and who are just in the community, because that's the root of, of, of problems. That's, the, that's, the, that's where the, the problems in the community start. So we have to engage them meaningfully those who are, who, are, who are, in fact, we have a lot of young people on the morning who go and, and sweat on the fields. We have to improve the sporting facilities because they are asking for that. They are asking for gears. They are asking for better facilities. 
we have to work with them. Um, we have, I, I, I want to improve on the, on the club structure in the community. Uh, I want those groups to be, um, to be registered so that they can benefit from competition, they can benefit from, from um, training, et cetera, and, and work with them so that we develop a Chozel with a Chozel Salty Bus, with young people who are growing up in social groups and becoming leaders so that we don't go about the place looking for, for, for leaders. Um, these young people, and if we, if we train them, if we give them the confidence, if we motivate them, they can help themselves. Our youth, they feel helpless. They feel that they have been abandoned. They, they feel that there is no need for them to vote. And the St. Lucia Labour Party is bringing hope to the youth. So we are trying to help them to get employment. We, are help, we want to help them to, to start their own businesses. And then we want to help them to develop their talent, their skills, their hobbies, so that they can make a livelihood out of it. Thank you, Dr. Prosper. And I mean, that's very well articulated. So almost like you spend time thinking about this, nursing it, um, and ready to deliver. So I, re I really wish Shasni would just ring the bell, honestly. <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm not a bluff, I'm a realist. <laughs> Very nice. And, and you know, having come from the constituency, I could understand um, and all that the constituency has given you um, that, you know, it's really time for you to give back. And I, I, I could hail, I could I, feel it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Whoever I am is a reflection, is a reflection of what the Salty Bus community gave to me. Mm -hmm. they, gave, they gave me the confidence, they gave me the leadership skills, they got me ready for life. And this is why I'm such an independent person. And when a lot of women are afraid of coming into politics, I am there wholeheartedly and I'm not afraid. And I'm in it to win it. Very nice, um, Dr. Prosper. Um, before we get to the last five minutes, um, and I play some videos from your constituents for you, um, any final words for the people of Chozelle Saltibus? We know that um, the five-year anniversary will be on Sunday, June 6th, um, and St. Lucians have waited very patiently for this day to come. Very patiently, um, but the Prime Minister refuses to ring the bell and deliver us all. <laughs> um, but any final words for the people of Chriselle Saltivus, Dr. Prosper? Uh, the Prime Minister probably has very good reasons for not calling the election because I am sure he's afraid because he knows that he's losing the election. Okay. So I, I understand his position. However, the, the people from Chriselle Saltibus are ready to go to the polls. They are ready to, to vote for somebody they know that who cares, somebody who will be there with them to work with them. Because I, I have been going around and saying to the people of Chosel Salty Bus, it's not what I want. What do you want? For too long, people have been telling you what they want for you. And it is time that you tell us what you want in your various communities so that we can work with you. So I am ready to work with the people of Salty Bus so that they can, they can achieve their dreams. So they can have a livelihood. They can have a better standard of living. They can, they can help their children to have, to have a better future and take care of our community, take care of the elderly, help the people of Chozelle so that they have a better livelihood. And so I want the people of Chozelle Salty Bus to realize that, hey, on Sunday the 6th, it will be five years since election. And, I, and all my life, I have been telling the students that I teach that election in St. Lucia is held every five years. Maybe some of my past students are watching me and calling me a liar today. But this is what they were taught. This is, this is what the curriculum teaches them, that election is every five years. So it baffles me that the prime minister is still playing games and refusing to call elections. Salty Bas Chozelle, let us come out. Come out to vote. Do not hesitate to vote. You have everyone's vote counts. We are, we want, I want you to come in large numbers. Let us support ourselves. 
Let us support Shuzel Saltibus. Let us support our community, our children, our generation, because Alan Chastney has put a debt on our generation of millions. And so we now have to work to rescue our country, our constituency, our loving Chuzel Salt, our beautiful Chuzel Saltibus. So let's get out in large numbers. Let us mobilize people. Let us come out to vote and remove Chastney's knee from our neck so that we can breathe again. Wow, thank you, Dr. Prosper. And I don't think I have anything else to say. Um, but, you know, June 6th, Alan Chastney needs to just call the election so that we can exercise our franchise and vote him out. <laughs> Agreed. I <sleep. laughs> um, Thank you so much for joining me on SLP Town Hall Tuesday. Um, St. Lucia, it has been a pleasure to be here with you, to come into your homes. Um, but that's all for us this evening. Have a good night.